Well, we're live. It's 7.02, a Monday morning, January 3rd, 2002. Hard to believe. And I'm just getting ready. Maybe some of you will jump live online with us as we're getting ready to kick off this year with Morningstar Fellowship. And I'm just trying to get here a little beforehand. So we're ready to go. And many of you can look at this later today, but I encourage you to do so. Got a couple people on there, and I'm going to sound like everybody else that does this. That I kind of chuckle at at times. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good to be with you. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. <clears throat> Hope people are healthy. We're praying for you today. Some people... In our church family fellowship, they need prayer physically. There's people that are recovering, getting better. Those are just kind of walking through it right now, and it's a challenge, great challenge for churches. You know, I, I, I talked to a number of ministries, C ministries, and uh, especially our brothers and sisters in New York City. They're closed down right now, not open, and so we're blessed. We're going to keep going, and uh, Challenging times, crazy stuff going on here. 703, 705, 704. Okay, one more minute and we're going to get into God's Word, spend just a few moments together. Looking forward to this week. Uh, Teresa's going to be on tomorrow, then Ryan, and then Mike, and then Leo, the newest member of our team. He's going to be sharing, and we're talking about radical discipleship. That's what we're talking about this week today. And I want to encourage you and challenge you and um, just see you begin to grow in the Lord. Let's go deeper this year together. So we get started in just a moment. Good to see a number of people jumping on. God bless you. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's get started, 7.05, alive with Morningstar Fellowship. Good morning, it's Happy New Year, it's 2022, and I'm not used to saying that at all. I really am not. Uh, we're going to look in Luke chapter 9, get your Bibles out if you would, the last section of Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62. And as we begin 2022, our theme for this year at Morningstar Fellowship is live loud. That we're going to live loud for Jesus Christ. And that's taken from James chapter 1 verse 22. That we're to be doers of the word, not hearers only. So I encourage you, we're going to put into practice what we're hearing the Lord say, what we're receiving from the Lord. We're going to live without shame. We're going to live with the boldness of the Holy Spirit for Jesus Christ in 2022. And so we're looking at today, Luke chapter 9, and um, Jesus, have you noticed, he says some things and he says things in his word that really are challenging. They really are challenging. And he's talking about the cost of following him, the cost of discipleship. And it's not making an emotional decision. We need to see he touches our emotions, but really when it comes to following him, it's going to take a commitment. We need to see this and think this out. Let's open in prayer. Lord, we love you. We thank you for who you are, your wonderful presence. I pray for my friends, my church family, my brothers, my sisters. I pray that um, this year that we would spend time in your presence, worshiping you, kneeling before you, hearing your voice, reading your word, developing a friendship and intimacy with you. Lord, I pray you take us deeper in you. Lord, we want to grow as a church family numerically, but much more we want to grow spiritually. We want to go deep and wide. And so bless our time together today and this week as we begin a new year. Thank you, Lord, for new beginnings. In Jesus' name, amen. So as I said, have you noticed Jesus says some challenging things? And so Luke chapter 9, in the latter part here, starting with verse 57, we see Three men who approached Jesus eager to follow him. But it's kind of surprising in surprising fashion. Jesus, when we first look at this, he seems to try to talk them out of following him. And so 
These three, and we could call them candidates for discipleship, illustrate the demands that there is involved when we follow Jesus, the demands of following Jesus. So the first guy says, I will follow you wherever you go, Jesus. But Jesus responds and he says, foxes have holes and the birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Now, I want to say right up front, when we look at these three scenarios, these three men saying, I want to follow you, Jesus, a, a way of teaching in Judaism, especially in the first century, one way to teach was with great exaggeration to drive your point, to bring your point home. And so Jesus is doing this right here, what we see in verse 57 through 62 in Luke 9. He is using exaggeration, hyperbole, to bring his point home. And so he says, and he's not saying, you know what, you're going to be homeless when you follow me. You know what, I am the God who cannot provide for all your needs. I am the God that can't supply them. He's not saying that. He's saying this to this man. You know what, don't get permanently attached to this world. He says, don't get permanently attached to this world and the things of this world. He says, I'm going to be on the move. Are you willing to go where I go and do what I do? And, and there was a song that we would sing in church when I was very young. And it would say, I'll go where you want me to go, dear Lord. I'll do what you want me to do. And that song really impacted my life. And when I really made a commitment to Christ and decided I'm going to follow you, Jesus, that, that song was really in my heart and my mind. Am I really, really willing to go where you want me to go and do what you want me to do? And this is what Jesus is saying to this man. Be willing to follow me wherever I go. Are you willing to do my will? Then the second man um, told Jesus, my father has just died. He wanted to go back, bury his father. And then Jesus says something, and to us it sounds very cold. But once again, exaggeration to bring home the point because Jesus is talking about the cost of following him, the cost of discipleship, what we're facing today. Will we follow Jesus? And Jesus says, let the dead bury the dead, dead come and follow me. Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And you think about that, and all of us have loved ones that's passed. So he's talking about his father, Teresa and I have had our parents pass and we've been within those last few years and they weren't the same as they were when we were growing up and they were older, elderly, weaker. Teresa's mom was in a nursing home and Teresa saw her and her sister saw their mother faithfully every day, every other day. And um, my father and mother, they weren't in a nursing home, but in a facility that was transitional, almost a nursing home. And that was in a sense, their last stop before they went to heaven. But it was difficult to see them in that time of their life because they weren't the same as they were before. And then they passed away and we have the separation of their passing. And Jesus isn't being disrespectful and insensitive. Yes, we should have memorials and funerals and address you know, uh, their lives and honor them. But Jesus is talking about a problem here and it's procrastination. Because many times God says, I want you to go here. I want you to do this. He shows us his will, our next steps. And we procrastinate at times as human beings. Well, I'll get around to that. Yes, I'm going to do that. I'm going to serve in this ministry. I'm going to get involved. Yes, I'm going to go talk to that person. But we can procrastinate and we justify it. We're busy. We have our schedules and that's what Jesus is talking about. Not someday. I want you to do it now, today. Do this today. And then the third man approached Jesus and told him that he wanted to follow him. But before so, I before I do that, Jesus, I need to say goodbye to my family. And, and Jesus wouldn't let him do that. And he told him, well, no one, and this is one that we've, a lot of us have struggled with. I've known pastors who have struggled with this. No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. And, and I think we've interpreted this falsely over the years. Many of us have thought, well, he's talking about backsliding, or Jesus is saying we can lose our salvation. And, and what he's talking about is a relationship with him. And he's saying, if you're going to serve me, it's going to require total and exclusive devotion to me. We go back to the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods before me. 
And this is what he's talking about. Let nothing else in this life take my place. I'm your number one. And so he's talking about, you know, half-hearted discipleship is really going to eliminate you from maximum use in the kingdom of God. You're not going to be content. You're not going to be satisfied. You're not going to have the joy and the peace if you're only half serving me. I want you to know what it's really like to have the thrill of knowing me, of living life for me and with me. You're going to always have a little bit of discontent. You know what? I have things for you to accomplish and things for you to do. That's what he's saying to us. When you place me number one in your life, I'm going to use you in this life for my kingdom. You're going to honor me. You're going to represent me well. You're going to make an impact and influence in people's lives. You're going to advance the church of Jesus Christ. That's what he's talking about. So Jesus gave up everything for you and me. Are we willing to do that for him? That's the question. Do we love him in a way that supersedes everything else in this life? And so I want to be brief today as we wrap up. I want to ask you this question. May we determine together as we begin this new year, 2022, not to spend our lives on anything but radical abandonment to Jesus Christ and his kingdom. That's what we're talking about. Let's live loud for Jesus in 2022. Let's live this out in such a way that when we talk about Jesus, people will see Jesus in us and we're gonna see many people come into the kingdom this year. That's what I'm believing for. I'm believing that through Morningstar Fellowship, one church, two campuses, we're gonna see more people get saved this year than we've ever seen in 17 years of Morning Star Fellowship. We're gonna see more people baptized in water than we've ever seen before in Morning Star Fellowship. We're gonna see more people get involved and connected and growing in the Lord and becoming disciples and followers of Jesus Christ and following him. I wanna encourage you this week, spend some time with Jesus. Get alone in his presence. Really receive his heart. Hear his voice. Let's live loud this year for our Lord and Savior who loves us greatly and gave everything for us. Love you so much. God bless you. Have a great day in the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, bless my friends today, my brothers and sisters today. May we represent you well in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Have a great day.